Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 1 of The Warrens. I am Frederick Knutson, probably better known as That Down the Rabbit Hole Guy, and I am joined by my very good friend, Jabroni Mike. Hello everybody. If you know me, cool. If you don't, I am a content creator, as we call ourselves. Twitch, YouTube, I like to catch all of just professional internet asshole. It works. Kind of describes it, right? <laughs> pretty pretty succinctly, you know who I am and what I do once you hear that. <laughs> well, he's going to be helping me cover some very interesting topics. I get a lot of suggestions for Down the Rabbit Hole. Um, and even if the topic is interesting or strange, they don't necessarily fit the Down the Rabbit Hole style. Um, and so this is my chance to go back and look at some of these weird topics and cover them in a slightly different format, a very different format. And for episode one, we've decided to go full Black Mirror, and we are covering something that might make a few of you out there squirm. We are covering a book titled Semenology, The Semen Bartender's Handbook by Paul Foti Fotenhauer. Paul Semen Demon Fotenhauer. You will come to understand Paul Fotenhauer quite well by the end of this book because he drops a lot of hints about his personality throughout this. And I think the best way to get to know him is just to dig right in. We are going to be reading the book in pretty much its entirety. Now, if you are listening to this in the car or while you're drawing or while you're gaming, um, we are going to do our best to give you the full experience of the book as much as we can. Uh, but... If you would like to follow along, and you have the opportunity to do so at this moment, we will have a link in the description to the PDF of this book. Make sure you have a vomit bucket in front of you. It is, it is graphic. There are images. High-res images. Very lovingly crafted images. Somebody went to photography classes. Yes. Yeah. Like, either, he, either he did this on his very nice camera... Or he got he hired someone out to do this because these the photos are very visually pleasing in terms of like not, not necessarily the content but like the way they are uh, put together they are nice photographs you would love these photographs if these cocktails didn't have come in them yes is what he's trying that is to a say yeah great way of these would be it. great photos if they were just a little bit less cummy. <laughs> Why do you have to use that fucking word? Very professional photographs. Let's get started. It, the, the book opens with a dedication. I dedicate this book to all my enthusiastic fans that have supported my efforts to continue the promotion of semen in the kitchen. This book is long overdue. Thank you for your support and patience. A special thanks to Ricard Gagné, whose well-developed semen palette was invaluable in the test kitchen. Well-developed semen palette. <laughs> That's not a phrase you're ever expecting to hear. Roll that one around on your tongue for a minute. Stop! Right now! Yeah. His name is Ricard Gagné. It is a French surname. I, I believe, yeah. But I, I think we should pronounce the second G as a hard G, so it's Gagner. It is. It definitely because reads Because this guy gags a lot, and he's making me gag right it's, now. It's, I mean, apparently not, because he's invaluable in the test kitchen. He's used to this shit. That's why he's there. He's got his Gagner reflex under control. Yeah, he's got that on <laughs> lockdown. Let's go ahead and get to the intro on page three. Um, I'd like to note, the page layout is terrible. Like, there's some bad design decisions here. It's an ugly fucking book. Yes, absolutely, in terms of the text. Um, the, it's not introduction, it's just intro in the same font as the body font but larger and indented by a single space that, that that's it he just hit the space bar and was like ah fuck it good enough very amateur style choices yes it, he it looks like this was a personal passion project <laughs> oh i bet it was <laughs> my fucking god god damn it it has been four years since I first published my semen cookbook, Natural Harvest, a collection of semen-based recipes. This is something we forgot to bring up. This man sort of did the talk show rounds. He did, huh? They discovered, yeah, they discovered, oh, funny man make funny cum book. And so they interviewed him. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it, 
gets a chuckle out of me every time. That's why we're doing it as a podcast topic. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're making a podcast mm-hmm. about it, so. Fred and I share a juvenile sense of humor, don't we? To a certain extent. To, to extent. a certain extent. I'm, yeah. I, I'm, I, I feel like I'm more into the cum jokes. You're more into the poop jokes. I do go, I veer a little bit more into the poop zone than you do. Right, <laughs> like you'll zone. you'll you'll go as low as as come, but you won't stoop to poop. Right, you're not a you're not a poop stooper. I originally wrote the book to change the negative view of semen as a food and encourage readers to open their minds, kitchens, and ultimately their mouths to semen. Phrasing. We eat milk. <laughs> we eat milk, cow secretions, and eggs, chicken menstruation. So why all the fuss about semen's inappropriateness as food? Really gotta love the false equivalency in that paragraph, yes. right? Yeah, th- this was something we were discussing before the episode, that he's trying to say, oh, we eat, like, animal tissue, so, like, so why not semen? It's The problem is, it's human tissue. Right. We eat meat, why not eat human flesh? Like, it doesn't work like exactly. that, Paul. Sorry. Yeah. My cookbook has broadened the minds and culinary landscape for semen enthusiasts all over the world. Although most of my <laughs> fans are from... <laughs> Although most of my fans are from the United States, the book was warmly received in many other countries. Unsurprisingly, the culinary nations of France and Italy loved the book, and one French newspaper proclaimed that semen-based dishes were the latest fad in America. Fred, you remember getting that memo as an American about that fad? I missed it. I. If Fred. anyone out there has information about the fucking like semen fad that <laughs> we just missed... Please tell us. The underground semen fad that's sweeping the nation, yeah. Who is he fooling? Went under my radar. I mean, maybe maybe I'm just not, you know, in cum circles all the time. <laughs> maybe you got to go to more circle jerks. Maybe you got to be in those kinds of circles <laughs> to find out about this. The book was smuggled into Saudi Arabia since customs won't allow the book in. And uh, you know that was just one dude who was like, he, 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 I'm bringing the cum book to the like, Islamic countries. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> Got off on, like, the civil disobedience of it, yeah. In Singapore, the book inspired cooking classes and was regularly featured on various cooking shows. Our troops in Iraq and Afghanistan pre- preferred the ebook versions of the book, and with their ample supplies of semen, I trust that the novelty <laughs> relieved the otherwise unexciting canteen cooking. So he wants you to believe that there is a group of, of soldiers, like, sitting in a, in a tent... In, in fucking Iraq or Afghanistan <laughs> that are fucking just jacking off into a bucket so they can make fucking, you know, food with it. I, guess. <laughs> I could see the Navy doing that, but I have a hard time <laughs> seeing the Army doing that. I was telling you this earlier. Fucking, um, that, that, that's a Chris Chan thing. Like, Chris Chan calls his, se- or like, called their semen Navy because the Navy has semen in it. Bizarre, because again, semen is the medical term. Like, I, I could, it? I could like, see not wanting to say cum or jizz, but why do you have a problem saying semen? That's not like a naughty no no word. That's in t- fucking medical textbooks. Like, it is semen. I, 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 I guess, but that like, maybe like there's there's kind of a question mark there. It. <laughs> I don't want to be the guy that talks about Chris Chan anymore. Jesus Christ. I am You'll happy. never escape it. I no, you never, you never escape. You talk about Chris Chan once, you are forever that guy who talked about Chris Chan on the <laughs> internet. It's your fate. I am happy that semen is no longer neglected as a food, and I am proud that my humble cookbook was the driving force that unleashed semen into the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that it, unleashed semen into the kitchen. It's, it's an interesting vocabulary choice. It, it suggests he knows he did something wrong. If you ask yeah, me. like unshackled. He j- like let unshackled. loose a fucking tidal wave of jizz <laughs> on an <laughs> unsuspecting <laughs> kitchen. An innocent kitchen. Oh, you know what that fucking reminds me of? Mm. And then I break into your house no! and then I go into <laughs> <laughs> Cooking and I'm cleaning and I'm vigorously masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> Anything but that. <laughs> you know why semen was neglected as a food, Paul? Because it's not food! I have continued to develop and experiment with semen recipes along with my general cooking skills. In 2011, I used the funds generated by the sales of the cookbook to take cooking classes in Europe, both in Switzerland and in Spain. 
the Spanish classes were the most fun, especially the short course in bartending. Mixing drinks is fun, and it is very easy to experiment and create new drinks. Do you think that they kicked him out of his cooking classes as soon as he slapped his cock and balls on the table <laughs> and just started jerking it vigorously? He's like, I gotta, I gotta see how this tastes in the pie. No consummate, like, self-respecting chef would allow something like that to take place in their kitchen. This is, this is anybody who, who is a, an, a culinary artist in any way would be mortified by this. This is, this is how you ruin food. Okay, there's no way his shit was gonna be tolerated in like a master class fucking cooking class in, in, in Switzerland. Like, like no fucking way. He would have been immediately taken off the premises. You know, that's what Gordon Ramsay's been missing. Uh, if only he just jizzed in the chicken. A mosaic of the semen. <laughs> remember that? I forgot about that. Remember Fuck. that? Yes. This yes, cum is raw. This cum is fucking raw it's so delicious he, he says he uses the funds generated by the sales of the cookbook but i i have a hard time believing that this sold enough copies for him to do that i don't know you make the rounds and everyone's like ha ha i got the cum book maybe as a meme like people bought it as yeah. a meme maybe yes like, yes absolutely no dude like like remember the, those talk shows are largely watched by boomers and if boomers have anything, it's the whole, it's like huge stores of money. <laughs> I thought you were going to say out there. huge stores of cum is what I thought you were no. going to say. No, 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 no. Well, I don't know. Like, we should probably move on. We are making fun oh, of Christ. we are making fun of this guy, obviously. But I just want to say, like, I do respect. I do respect the hustle. All right, I'm happy that he was able to find a way to make his way in this world doing something that he loves. Um, I just, I, I hope his parents are proud of him. <laughs> which is something I want to return to later if we have time. Please continue. Oh, we will. <sniffs> Semen is an exciting ingredient, ingredient that can give any cocktail an interesting twist. Please don't use the word twist in this context. CBT is in this season, Fred. S <sighs> Semen adds an exciting personal... I, fuck, I, I try to take refuge by continuing to read, but it's like, it's like jumping from like a pot of soup like being in one into the fire yeah it's just there's no escape yeah that's a cum soup specifically oh otherwise known as new england clam chowder semen adds an exciting per <laughs> personal touch to your favorite cocktail the semen connoisseur will appreciate how alcohol can enhance the delicate <laughs> semen flavors the experienced semen bartender also carefully selects spirits that either accentuate or camouflage the taste of semen all depending on the drinker's preference. <laughs> Foti, cookingwithcum.com, hashtag semenology. Oh, he takes himself so seriously. This is definitely someone's fetish, right? Like, lined up all, like on top of a board and there are holes for their junk and it and like the bartender's <laughs> like oh I'll, I'll use like this 22 year old man semen and he just jerks him off real quick to get it into the shot glass it's like it's like taps at a bar yes for draft except it's just dicks and they're like jacking him off that that's what you the image that you just put in my head frederick <laughs> yeah you right. get to share in this motherfucker yeah. all right so do you want to read off um the table of contents or did you want to no no, no, no. I, I, I want this, I, I want the experience of this to slowly reveal itself, like the complicated flavors of a cum drink. <laughs> all right, so, so where do you want to go from here? You want to go to the first recipe? Oh, yeah, we're going to go through all of these recipes. But first, I want to take a look at the, the contents. Like, look at the table of contents. Tell me if you see anything that doesn't quite work. All right, so... The first recipe is on page six. The second is on page seven. The third is on page nine. Uh, yep. The next one is on page 11. And the next one is on page 136, <laughs> implying that the previous recipe was 120 something pages long. <laughs> but then or, it goes back to page 17. Or, and then it goes back to page 17. So I'm thinking it's a typo. No, you know what this is? It's a choose your own adventure book. <laughs> Holy fuck, it is. It's like, if like if, if you want to take the right path, jerk yourself off and then go to page 136. Choose your own gooey adventure. Oh, stop right now. <laughs> Fucking Christ. All right, so. Our first drink is prostate passion. 
already the <laughs> the veneer of trying to make this a like oh a you know, drinks for anyone like, is so, just gone. So, something legitimate right and i mean he yeah. went he went for a uh, an alliteration right with with the, pro the the two p's on this recipe mm -hmm. uh in an attempt to make it to make it cute but uh it's having the opposite effect isn't it mm -hmm. um now interestingly enough this recipe does not contain semen do you notice that oh yeah this is it, you're right oh he's just he's priming the pump <laughs> choice of words fred why don't you go ahead and read us the description of this drink a healthy prostate is vital for ensuring good quality semen and ample volumes. This drink <laughs> is made with pomegranate, a fruit that is renowned for its positive effect on the prostate. This is the only drink in this book that does not contain semen. It is nonetheless pretty scrumptious. I... gosh. I feel like your reading actually captured the way that he wanted it read. The next one is... He really just fucking dives into this, too. Like, the first one is just like, oh, okay. And then the next one is just a fucking pile driver. <laughs> this is the Macho Mojito. Yeah, he went for an another alliteration. Right? Yes. Uh, it's, it's really corny the whole way through. It's not good. I recently learned that the name Mojito comes from the Spanish word Mojadito, which translates as a little wet. This coincidentally also applies to many situations involving semen. And there, it's just gone. If the previous one was like, aha, I'm going to poke fun at it. This is just like, it's gone. Like any pretense of this being anything other than fetish material is just out the window well, right now. Well, you know, listen, cooking with cum is a heavy topic. He wants to have a little bit of levity is what this is. This is just, he's throwing in mm -hmm. a joke. You know, he doesn't, you know, he wants you to take him seriously, but he doesn't want you to take him that seriously, right? It, it's like your friend that's into cars and he's just like, oh, you know, it's not that hard to, you know, replace this bit. Let's go, you know? And then you're there for like three days straight trying to replace this thing. That's basically what's happened here. He lures you in. He's just like, oh, you know, I'm just going to teach you. You're like, I'll, I'll come can be like a legitimate thing. <laughs> Gonna come in your mouth. Who's ready for right a Bukaki sesh? Whoa, dude, I just came here to hear you, like, maybe mildly suggest that cooking with semen could be a good idea. Now, Lip biscuit! <laughs> dude, what happened? I'm fucking, I'm drowning in cum now. What did you do to me? This, you, this, <laughs> you completely misrepresented this. You're a pervert, aren't you? I'm starting what? to think that the guy who wanted to make cocktails with cum might be a pervert. Thoroughly blend lime juice and sugar. Add the mint leaves and gently bruise the leaves to release the flavors by mashing the mixture with a muddler. Then, add the rum and stir to lift up the mint leaves from the bottom of the glass. Top the drink with whole ice cubes and soda water. Do doing okay so far. Not weird. Using a milk frother, gradually whisk small amounts of powdered sugar into melted semen until it reaches a creamy, airy consistency. Taste- Oh, the word taste choices. <laughs> Taste frequently to achieve the perfect sweet and salty balance. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with this guy? Carefully spoon the sweet froth into the side of the glass so that it gracefully cascades down the glass. <laughs> Garnish with lime wedges. And then there's a picture that I cannot handle right now, so I'm just gonna scroll right the fuck past that shit. No, thank you. Cascade? is the perfect word to describe it this. is it there, is i i could not come up with a better word if i tried it's it's literally what's happening in the photo that you made me scroll back to so i could look at it while you talked about yeah. it and i'm hating every yeah. fucking second of it it's like what, what what i hate is oh and then there's a spoon of extra semen there too you and see it that? works because the cum is a different viscosity than the rest of the drink so it does a thing where it kind of like separates and it goes down the sides of the glass and not in the middle of it. So there's a very distinct difference between the mojito and the cum and you can see it. And it's like the type of thing that would actually look cool if that wasn't cum and was something else. I think the most unsettling part of this is that it's actually kind of visually pleasing. It's, like, it's visually pleasing nice. in the way that like a lava lamp is visually pleasing. Yes, yes. Or, or you know, um, why don't we just admit that we want to eat cum, Fred, at that point? I, 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 get on your fucking back, dude. Let's go. <laughs>
<laughs> Yo, it's visually I, pleasing, isn't it? Yes, it's I'm gonna fun show to you. It. I'm gonna show you a macho mojito. <laughs> Let's keep going. Semen rimmed margarita. <laughs> well, you know, you know, you gotta have salt on the rim, right? The margarita, right? What oh. better way to do that? Yeah. Oh, he gives us a recipe for its semen rimming salt. God, why did it have <laughs> to be words. rimming? I, oh dear fuck. He knows what he's doing. He's making a specific kind of salt with the cum for use in this cocktail. And he calls it rimming salt. But that's what it is, right? Rimming salt, a specific kind of salt that you rim the margarita glass with, right? Yes. This drink is traditionally served in a salt-rimmed glass. However, the semenologist prepares the glass with his own homemade semen salt. See, he introduces this like the semenologist is a prestigious title. <laughs> he even capitalized it! He even capitalized the word. He did, you're right. He really oh, wants you to think that he is legitimate and this entire enterprise is legitimate. Right? I, I hiked up an, a secluded mountain covered in snow in the dead of winter to find the master semenologist <laughs> and for him to share his cummy wisdom. Oh, it's like an RPG character. Sit a, while, <laughs> sit a while and peruse my wares, young traveler. You look weary from the road. Oh, no, don't sit in that chair. No, no, no. That's got cum all over it. Sit in that one instead. Oh, sorry, there's cum there, too. Examine what I have in my lap. <laughs> underneath this blanket, but do not look. Uh, is this your balls? Yes. Potion seller, give me your finest semen cocktail. We're getting, we're getting off track again. God damn it. Let's go to the next recipe. All right, well, we have the semen rimming salt. I, I feel like, you know, making the margarita is pretty dull, but making the salt is a very involved process. Why don't you step us through, Mike? This procedure must be done well in advance. Mix the semen and salt until the salt is completely dissolved. Place the mixture in a shallow stainless steel dish, making sure that the paste is spread out evenly. Place the dish in a warm, sunny place. Once all the liquid has evaporated, crush the semen-infused salt into a powder. The semen salt is now ready to be rimmed. Semen salt is very versatile in the kitchen, so you may decide to make a large batch. Just, just in case you want to make your fucking pancakes, just drizzle it on your fucking pancakes. I put that shit on everything. It's like Frank's Red Hot. Like... <laughs> He puts out on the windowsill and then invites someone over. And then he's like, hey, hey, Jill, come and look at this. Hey, Jill, aren't you curious about what that is? N no, no, Paul, I'm not. You sure? Not even a little bit? Is it cum, Paul? Paul, is it another one of your cum recipes, Paul? <laughs> How did you know that? And and you know what? Like, I'm looking at the picture of the margarita and it's like, man, like, like I would drink that. Like, if you put that you in front know. of me and you, and, you, and you told me, like, it was a regular margarita, I'd be like, oh, it looks like a tasty margarita. Sip. Sip. Yeah. Sip. Boy, this tastes familiar. Sip. And it doesn't taste <laughs> like a margarita. Sip. <laughs> uh, the next recipe, Fred, you want to take this one? Heavenly Cognac. It is almost a shame to add anything to a good quality cognac, anything that is, except for semen. <laughs> However, my first attempts at perfecting the blending of these two heavenly fluids were disappointing. I found, as is often the case, that simplicity is best. Splashing the semen into the well-filled glass is an entertaining way to serve cognac. <laughs> so I'm just imagining him sitting there, like, flicking it in with his finger. Like, just... Oh, stop. <laughs> Fucking asshole. I found that it is best to first allow the semen to just begin to melt at the initial stage of melting. This takes a few minutes. If the semen is unusually thick, quickly dilute with a few drops of water. See, that's the kind of semen you're going to get at the end of No-Nut November. If it's a No-Nut November load at the end of the month, you may have to pay attention to this passage in particular. Splash the semen into the cognac and enjoy. Surprisingly, I have found that unlike cognac that grows better with age, heavenly cognac tastes best when you made when made with the seminal fluids of a younger producer. Disturbing with a capital D. Ugh, how many people has he tried this with, right? Like, how many people <laughs> has he conned <laughs> into just? Oh yeah. Oh, Try, man. Like, 
No, j- just come on over. I just, I just want to hang out. I just want to chase your semen. You think he goes down to the bus stop and he's like, "Hey, gang, uh, I'm working on a project. Like, I'll give you five bucks uh, for you to jizz in this cup." Like, you think he's finding random people, or you think he's like, "Why well, just homeless people?" <laughs> just, or he goes to like, you know, like the Home Depot or or like Lowe's Home Improvement, and then there's like, you know, migrant workers there, and he's like, "Trabajo, trabajo, hop in the back of my pickup truck." <laughs> oh no! You know, like he's like, what, like how is he getting this cum? Oh, what if he's friends with the Jo Crystal guy? <laughs> I think it's a guarantee that he is. If you scroll down, you'll see the beautiful images of him drizzling semen into cognac. I don't like that photograph, Fred. In I, ca- I, like there are five. There are five of them. Oh my god! Why did there need to be five? Why did this need to be like a glamour photo shoot for this fucking cocktail? Why is this like, why is he like this? Why? And also, you know, there's cognac enthusiasts. Like he, he, he claims to respect cognac, but anybody who actually appreciates this drink would fucking lose their shit over this. Like this disrespect of cognac. Like they take it seriously. Like he's making enemies. He's making enemies, this guy. Yeah. The, the worst part is that it's just floating to the surface. Uh, mixing. Well, if you look at the bottom, it starts to kind of just melt in a little bit. Like no, I I, I think that's from like the dropping it in, because he's pouring it. It, is. it. it looks See? like he's he's pouring it out of another container, right? Like he's pouring yes. it. Like this is not coming from somebody's dick hole. Like he's just like just pouring it out. Maybe he's got like a like a sifter, a snifter, or some shit. He's uh-huh. like look at that one very long uh drip. Like what is he using to do that, right? Oh, he, he, you know he has a special container for it, and he, like, keeps it lovingly on the shelf and invites people over, he, and he shows it off. polishes that thing. He worships it. I'm going to move on to the next beverage. Yes. I, all right. Semen-enhanced absinthe. Few drinks are as fascinating and mysterious as absinthe. Absinthe contains various herbs and other botanicals, but is most known, no, there's a typo there, for including mm-hmm. wormwood. Also, no. As the, uh, not the same typo again. It's the same typo twice yeah. in a row. What the fuck? This was not proofread. Yeah, but yeah. but is most no for including wormwood. Also no as the gra- what? Yeah, he fucked. How him. do you do that twice in a row? The same word. This fuck. Maybe his like fucking fingers were so sticky with cum that they kept getting like sucked on the keyboard and he couldn't type properly. Also Stop. known as the Green Fairy, absinthe has been cherished by many prominent writers and artists. Oscar Wilde, who is one of my all-time favorite favorites, was an avid drinker. Now you know I, Oscar Wilde loved to chug cum, like no. Oh, question, absolutely! Right? Like big time cum chugger. So you got you got this guy uh, standing <laughs> Oscar Wilde. No surprises there. Um, aside from the taste and beautiful color, the joy of drinking absinthe lies in the way it is traditionally prepared. Place a sugar cube on a teaspoon and then place the spoon on the glass of absinthe. Carefully spoon the semen on top of the sugar cube, trying not to get any into the glass. Then slowly drip ice cold water over the cum covered cube. The cum sweet semen water cube. will gradually give the absinthe a whitish tint. And there oh, it is. Oh, and then, um, and then th- the photograph is just. Uh, 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 there's the sugar cube covered in semen. Yeah, there it is. it's uh, it's it's pretty wild. <laughs> it's an Oscar Wilde. <laughs> oh, stop! Oh, stupid. This is like the third time he's made an appeal to authority. It's like, really, guys, this this is good. This is legit. Just eat my cum. <laughs> Just eat it. Just shut up and eat it. I promise <laughs> it's good. Oscar Wilde would have done it. You want to be like Oscar Wilde, don't you? <laughs> Our next recipe is absolute semen. I only use premium vodka to make this drink. It does not make any sense to adulterate premium seed with low-quality vodka. You know, because that would just be fucking crazy, wouldn't it? (laughs) Premium. Mike, do you want my premium seed? Yes, daddy. All right, you should probably edit that out. That was weird. No, I'm leaving it in. (laughs) Simply right. pour the fresh harvest into a shot glass and then carefully fill the glass with ice-cold vodka. Depending on your texture preference, either melted gives a smooth drink or unmelted for a more gelatinous texture. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's, uh, that's hard. 
That is a hard load to swallow, my guy. Oh, no. Oof. No. Like, again, I want to stress, in the right context, we're fine. Like, it's fine. This isn't that context. No, again, we're not kink shaming. If you'd like to eat cum, no. God bless you. That's awesome. Um, I just, there's something about this specifically, using it in recipes that we felt we needed to examine a little more deeply. He, he has asked us to consider this as an ingredient, not as fetish material. Yeah. And that is what is... Ugh. But as you suspect, um, this whole uh, this whole enterprise of his is really just an extension of his kink. I feel like right. I don't need to really explain that any further. It's uh, pretty self-explanatory at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But, but he may as well fucking admit it, right? I mean, who's he fooling? I mean, at yeah, this nobody. point. Like, nobody. The, only, the only people seriously who are ever going to consider at, at all buying into this are people who are already down with eat and come. And yeah. they, they might just fucking say, they, hey, you know what? Could be cool. To take that to the next level. We are talking about, I think, maybe, well, that, that, it's probably double-digit people globally. Uh, yeah. You know, okay. I, mean, I, I have, I just realized something. Yes. What if this is part of the kink? <gasps> Him being like, oh, like, oh. I, I'm going to put this book out. And by reading this book. We are feeding into the kink. It's like, oh, those people are reading it and like reading these, reading this as recipes or, you know, this is like putting them together as if they were legitimate recipes is part of the kink. I'll tell you what. And it just got I, out of hand. I, I, you, you, you have to be right. I, I feel like you have to be right about that. Um, and I, I'll admit I'm having a great time right now. This shit's fucking hilarious. So Paul, uh, have a nut. On me, buddy. <laughs> Have a glass. R raise a glass. Raise a glass to Foti. You've provided me with so much entertainment, the least that I could do is return the favor by indulging this weird, elaborate fuck fetish that you have. All right, by reading this out loud with my friend, and you can, you can just, you know, nut away, feel free, have fun with that on the house. You're welcome. A little quid. This is like a quid pro quo. A little bit, yeah. It's like we're we're both getting something out of this. It's a it's a mutually beneficial yeah, I don't, relationship. I don't feel fooled. I don't feel got. You know, I don't feel taken advantage of. This it feels it feels uh, appropriate. It feels, uh, equivalent exchange. But now we know. Like the the only reason you feel that way is because you know now. He might How not get off on this? it. Not now. knowing. This yeah. is kind of yeah. Th this is this is kind of gross now i'm like i'm less amused now that i now, now if that is true because he's sort of getting people in on his kink that don't want to be in on his kink well we're in too you know? deep now you want to pull out oh no we're we're going all the way in we're, we're bottoming out we are doing like come come jokes when we say this to each other right now right oh yes absolutely. okay just making sure yeah. we're on the same page with that yeah. all right yeah. um we got absolute semen uh do you want to move on to the next one Creamier eggnog. No! We're coming up on the festive season. Just in time for the holidays. <laughs> Homemade eggnog is much better than the industrial stuff, so it is well worth the effort. Brandy, bourbon, and rum all work well, although a blend of those spirits in equal parts is the best. Eggnog connoisseurs and semen enthusiasts use both ingredients in their raw state for maximum taste and <laughs> texture. You know, there's a good chance that there's a lot of crossover there. You know, if you have a Venn diagram of eggnog connoisseurs and semen enthusiasts, it's probably a complete circle. I, I also... <laughs> I, I, a little bit. I oh, It's, it's the texture. Yeah. It's got to be the texture. It's the color, it's I'd the also, texture, it's the taste. I, I'd also... Yeah, I, I'd like to point out to everyone, I know that we're kind of skipping over these recipes a little bit more. Um, if there isn't anything that juicy in there... Mm. Oh, God, why did mm. I say that? Juicy and juicy. Um, but really, all you need to know is it's just normal drink recipes with cum in it. <laughs> like, that's all it is. He wants it to be something more than that, but it's not. Like, make if you want to fuck with it, without buying the book, make your favorite cocktail, bust a load in it. You're ready to rock and roll. You got it. You figured it out. I feel like I ran into this kind of person at um, the tea. Uh, like when I, when I was, like, learning more about tea. Mm -hmm. um, 
there are people who are like, ah, oh, yes, you know, the, the spiritual aspects of tea. You know, they, it, it's about, like, bringing your body and your mind and your spirit together. And I'm just like, tasty leaf water. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just like the, the fucking disgusting American who's just yeah. like, this tastes good. There's coffee people like that, too, but it's more tea people. More Tea people Mostly, tend yeah. to be like that more, right? There, there's, um, a, there's a lot of woo surrounding tea. I don't, I, don't, I, I, I kind of expected to see Paul getting a little bit more, like, I guess, esoteric with it, if that's the right word. Kind of a little, a little yeah. bit more, uh, you know, like hippy dippy with the whole fucking thing. But he's not he's, really doing that. He's not making semen into something bigger than it is. And I'm at least grateful uh, for that. We we still have over half the book to go. Good point. You want to move on? Let's keep going. If you are lucky to have a large supply, you can substitute an egg for an equal amount of semen for more flavor. Just lucky, lucky, sitting on a whole stockpile of jizz. Mm, Santa must have came early this year. <laughs> oh. Sorry. The next one is called "The Milkman Is Coming." God, this is really a this is a fucking gauntlet. You want me I'm to like, get this? Get this one. Let me get this one. Please, please. <clears throat> the milkman is coming. In my college days, some French exchange students and I were drinking heavily one night. To our horror, we discovered that we had finished all our preferred mixers. We did, however, have plenty of vodka creme de frambois, and milk. We experimented with the three and found that the recipe below created a delicious drink. The semen was added years later. Did you also Again. think that that was going towards, like, you know, fucking these, these fucking frat boys, like, just yeah. jacking off into a cup, like, in a, yes. in a drunken stupor? You know? I was expecting that. Like, like I, I'm actually surprised it didn't end that way. I, I'm kind of relieved. Are you? Right? <laughs> it's just like, all right, no, this is still just his thing. It... <laughs> Again, like, and th this further feeds into my belief. He's just, he's just taking drinks that he already likes and coming in them. That's it. It's that simple. Um, That's it. Uh, you want to take Grasshopper Deluxe? All right. Good luck. Godspeed. Intriguingly green and minty, the Grasshopper is a sweet, refreshing after-dinner semen cocktail. <laughs> Seminal fluid and mint go surprisingly well together. However, too much mint liqueur risks masking the freshly ejaculated <laughs> flavors. Yeah, I bet it does. He, this is. Can I say that this is creamy rhetoric? It, he's he's deliberately doing it, right? Like he's yes, yeah. Right? This is not you know. This isn't a coincidence. Okay, he's hamming it up. Oh God! This the description of this drink. Okay, so. It's just, you know, put it onto a cocktail shaker, but alternatively, for a bolder touch, add your ejaculate after pouring the glass. The result will be a slightly lumpy, but more visually striking. Oh, will be, yeah. Yeah. Will be slightly lumpy, but more visually striking. Lumpy. Garnished with crushed frozen semen. Your, again, frozen semen. There mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Your grasshopper will be sure to please the most demanding semenologist. Again, capitalized. Oh, it's, it's like the, it's like curdled milk. But, but you look at the image that he added along with that. And like, I'm, my brain immediately went to pubes. <laughs> that is exactly it's like gar what? It's garnished with dark chocolate. Oh, God bless the like, people that don't have to see this right now. Oh, you lucky like, people. Like shaved chocolate, right? Yes, yes. Like if it was on anything else and like the implications were different, mm -hmm. fine. I've been primed. I've been primed to see pubes. I've been pube primed. <laughs> Would you like to introduce us to the Mexican cum slide? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I mean, talk about like running out of creative juice at this point. Mexican cum slide. I mean, I don't know where in the chronology he came up with the name for this one, but that 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 feels like one of the more like uninspired. Like, really, you just fucking yeah. you just like replace mud with cum, and you thought that that was good enough, Paul? Like, wait, come on, like we're we're already suspicious of you here, dude. This is the no, this is the point in the book where he was starting to get impatient and really wanted to jack it, and he's just like, uh, <laughs> Mexican cum slide. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's Talking about going. all the semen is really making me want to whack off. This deliciously sweet drink is the perfect dessert after a light dinner. The creamy concoction graciously incorporates the semen and the almond coffee flavors harmonize well with the delicate nuances of semen. Uh, and then he has an interesting little note down at the bottom. 
Resist the temptation to reduce the calorie content of this wonderful drink by using low-calorie dairy products. <laughs> Semen is an excellent choice for the way conscious. Yeah, he's selling it! He's selling jizz as, as like a health food now. Yup. Oh, you, you, you were saying at least he's not. No, you, you were saying at least he's uh, not doing this. Yeah, right? there it is. Um, yep. Oof. Uh, if you have if you have larger volumes stored in the freezer, it can be slightly thawed to a slush consistency to substitute some of the calorie laden ice cream. You know, I mean, imagine being concerned that you know you're not using low fat milk in the mudslide. But you're not concerned that there's cum in it. The next one is the most uninspired name. Oh. It's just, it's just Long Island iced tea. That, that, but that, 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 that does have to do with cum. No cum. Just, maybe we have an answer here. This classic cocktail is it's... notorious for being potent. The spirits combine magically to create a deceptive <laughs> concoction so delicious that drinkers always underestimate the alcohol content. That is true. This... The semen flavor is slightly overpowered by the other ingredients, but it becomes notice noticeable once the ice melts and the drink warms to room temperature. Right, so we could look forward to that. Oh, um, you think we could come up with a better like a better name than he did? Like I'm thinking like Long Guy Land Iced Tea. Uh, or something um, like, hmm, trying. Um, hmm. He really couldn't come up with one, huh? Long Island Iced Come. Like that would have been better than nothing, Paul. Like long shaft iced tea. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me take... Oh, oh, the best one in the book. By this far. is the right. one. The, we, we have both been wanting to get to this one. We were waiting for yes. this all, all, all fucking... Night. Do you want to read it, Fred? I feel bad. I feel like you might have been looking forward to, to, to get to getting this one. You want to get this I one? I appreciate it. Yes, yeah. please. I'll, by all th means. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank, thank you, Mike. Enjoy. I will take you up on that. Jim and Tonic. In the 18th century, the British army used gin and lime to mask the bitter taste of quinine. Quinine? Qu um, quinine? Quinine? I'm not sure how it's pronounced. A malaria treatment, and the gin and tonic was born. I discovered that this mixture also masks the slightly unpleasant taste of semen harvested from smokers. <laughs> this drink is named after my good friend and heavy smoker, Jim. <laughs> So if you want to pay attention, gym and tonic, just to be clear on that. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, make a gin and tonic. But it's this last bit that made me realize the first time I was reading this, that there really was an alternative motive to this book. Due to the fact that the semen flavors are not easily detected in this drink, some bartenders might be tempted to choose this drink to serve their ejaculate to unconsenting drinkers. This is deceiving and unethical. The fact that that paragraph is there at all is extremely Telling. disconcerting, isn't it? He already had a disclaimer, like... Or uh, I think toward the end of the book, he has a disclaimer. It's like, only, you know, do this with consenting people. But he went out of his way to say, this is a good drink to give to, like, to give to people to slip your cum into their belly. I'm not telling you to, because that is deceiving and unethical. But d d if you were to do it... This would be the way to do it, but you shouldn't do it. But if you were going to do it, you would do it this way. But you sh totally should not do it. This is the O.J. Simpson of semenology. <laughs> how did you come by this knowledge, Paul? How did you come to learn how deceptive the flavor of the gin and tonic could be when masking the taste of semen? How did oh, you no, find no, no. out? He, he would discover this on his own by, you by think? testing. You it's, think? It's, the, it, it's his readiness to discuss the potential applications of it mm. that really makes it bad. He, I'm, he, I'm saying he did this to people. I'm saying he did this to people, and that's how he knows, because he can't test it on himself, because as we all know by now, because he's gone to great lengths to constantly remind us that his palate, make no mistake, <laughs> is extremely well attuned to the flavor profiles of cum, right? Meaning that the only way he could have been sure that this was true is if he served this to people who had no fucking idea that they were drinking cum. Case closed. This guy should be in jail. I want to briefly point out this, this, the specific nature of him creating this cocktail specifically to mask the unpleasant taste of the semen from a smoker. Like, that's, yes. how, that's how far he's, he's gone with this. 
that he can distinguish. Like he could, he could just take a little drop of cum like on his tongue and be like, that person smokes cigarettes. I was about to say, like, do you think that they hang out and this dude just like lightly places a bit of Jim's semen on his tongue and he's like, hmm, have you been smoking Cubans? <laughs> Specifically, yeah. Like, he can de determine the origin of the tobacco. Yeah, yeah. And then point. Jim is just like, wow, you sure have a developed semen palate, <laughs> Foti. Like, it's, it's, it's the, the fact that it had become a problem for him. Because he's chugging yeah. that much cum that now, like, whenever he's got cum that, that, from a smoker, he, like, doesn't know what to do with it. He's got to, well, he's got to create a specific drink for it to work with that flavor profile. Maybe, maybe... You've gone too far, Paul. Had you considered that you've gone too far? Let's continue. Watermelon gin jizz. Modern semenologists have discovered the delicious drinks of the Prohibition era. This fruity, bubbly drink is perfect for a luncheon on a warm, sunny afternoon. Modern semenologists. It's just... It's just him in his basement. <laughs> it's just <laughs> him in his basement. It's just Paul by himself. Can't imagine he has a lot of friends. Probably not. He lost, he lost all of them because he kept using them to experiment whether or not he could hide the taste of jizz. All his friends are sitting there on the couch with, like, fucking chafed dicks. Like, all right, all right Paul, I don't have any more cum left. My balls is like raisins, Paul. Okay, we can't give you any more cum. Paul, you're killing us here, man. This is getting exhausting. Like, it was, it was funny at first, but now, dude, it's like, no one to stop. <laughs> No one just, they gotta be a very physically and emotionally and mentally exhausting person to be friends with, right? God, like, he would always try to steer the conversation toward jizz drinks. Like, it's definitely that kind of guy, right? Yes. Seminated frozen watermelon. Instead of ice, I sometimes like to make my drink fancy by using frozen semen-infused fruit. <laughs> Cut the watermelon or other fruit into cubes. Use a food syringe to inject oh, semen into Christ. the fruit then freeze. As the fruit thaws in the drink, the white fluid leaks out in glorious <laughs> streaks. See, this is what I'm talking about. It's like, hey, Paul, what you doing tonight? You want to hang out? Want to do something? Oh, no, man. See, I'm busy artificially inseminating fruit <laughs> with you, a fucking turkey that... baster. <laughs> um, this next drink is actually quite painful sounding. Um, this is, not only is this something that I, I don't want to drink, I don't even want to hear these words in, in, next to each other ever again in my life, okay? Uh-huh. It's called semen hemorrhage. Based on a popular drink made with Bailey's Irish cream, this recipe uses semen instead. The visually gorish mm. effect of the coagulated semen may cause some drinkers to hesitate, but once your guests taste it, they will want more. Again, this is just fetish fuel. Nobody is having their friends over to drink semen. Nobody's doing this. Nobody is doing this. Nobody will do this unless it's fetish fuel. Fred and if you look, if you look at the shot, the yeah. fucking picture. That's what I was. Uh, yeah, yeah. You were about to get to that, yeah. weren't you? Yeah. You know, oh. Oh dear fucking Christ. That is unappetizing looking, and he like he is right. This particular drink uh, goes beyond suggesting that this is some kind of fetish. And now moves into the territory of, Paul, you need to see a psychologist. The way that he describes it, too, is, I once served a tray of these at a Halloween party, but as I <laughs> needed more volume, I used frozen semen, and the hemorrhaging effect wasn't satisfactory. <laughs> Since then, I always make sure to have plenty of freshly harvested semen available when I make this drink. Trick or treat! Duh. Fucking... What kind of Halloween parties do you think he's holding? I... He can only do things with cum. Oh, what did you give the trick-or-treaters? Oh. Uh -huh. Paul. Yeah, pe people are worried about, oh, they're going to put drugs in your kid's candy. <laughs> no, th this is the problem. This is what you should be scared of. The mom is, like, inspecting the apples to make sure there aren't razor blades in them. And like, she's oh, just... why is there a turkey baster hole in <laughs> here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she cuts it open with a knife and the semen just gloops yeah. out. Yeah. So I, I I'd like to point out again, if this is like a, if it's a fetish Halloween party, fine, great. But again, that's not the rhetoric he's using. Like that that's not how he's framed this. 
I shouldn't say rhetoric. The rhetoric has very much been this is a fetish thing. But the, the framing is that this is a book for everyone. Yeah, this is a regular Halloween and then, party. And then, and then in, in the end, in the q and I remember, I remember this. He contradicts himself, but we'll get to that. Don't you worry. So he just, again, he did the thing where he served the semen to unsuspecting people. Like, I, that's, I there's no be. other way to take no, well, this. Well, no, no, no. How, how do you hide the semen? The semen's out in plain sight. It's floating on top of this drink. Like, he's not hiding this. It had to have been a fetish. He party. hands you that drink. You're going to say, whoa, that's come. Yes. No doubt. Yes. It's ectoplasm. It's ectoplasm. Yeah. No, stop. Spooky. Stop. No. Oh, fuck it's you. It's like those Halloween, like those horror-themed food YouTube channels, right? No. You know what's really spooky? Come. Orgasm on the beach. The classic drink sex on the beach is served throughout the world. It comes in many variations, and my version is a combination of the International Bartenders Association's recipe and the type found in Mr. Boston's Bartender's Guide. And then it's just... It's just a sex on the beach. It's sex That's on it. the beach with, with cum in it. I guess it would have uh, been... Except he doesn't of... stir it. He, ha he had to put this drink probably in this book. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Kind of... Uh... Requisite, I think. This next one is made for you. This is yours. All right. Pina cum lord. <laughs> yeah, I thought I that would even, tickle you. Basic even. fucking bitch. Of course, the dumb pun is going to get to you. Yeah. <laughs> the classic pina colada is a wonderful exotic drink that combines coconut cream and pineapples with light rum. Semen adds an additional exotic twist to the mixture, earning it a true cum laude status. Uh, I, I, like, as we go on, he's uh, mixing in the semen less and less, and he's just like, oh yeah, I just put some drops of cum in it after I made it. Can, can we, uh, listen, I did laugh at it, but that's just because like, I'm very easily amused, but this is a bad wordplay. Can I just point out that this yes. is not a good wordplay, like, at all? It, like, it, he, it is. It's, he, it's pretty lazy. He was going for pi, you know, pina colada, pina cum laude. Or I'm saying that because that's one of those, like, Greek letter letters, right? Laude, like, what's, yeah, how yeah. do you actually pronounce that? Laude day? Laude? I'm, I'm not it? sure. Maybe I'm, I'm saying it wrong? I, people usually pronounce it loud. Like, loud? Pina cum, cum loud? loud. Or, or lo loud. Oh, I, like, I, I've heard Americans don't know how to pronounce it, and I'm one. So, like, fucking whatever point being it doesn't sound like pina colada paul no sorry and it's like cum laude is when like you it's like when you graduate with honors is that what it is what it means what? yeah i believe so it's a fucking yeah, graduated cum laude it's a fucking stretch in any case you want to get the next one bellini di Sime. the this classic cocktail originates from the beautiful city of venice it is made from prosciutto which is an italian sparkling wine Pros and fresh prosecco 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 i'm sorry I'm sorry. What are you doing? Uh, are you are you mispronouncing my word? What are you doing? Yeah, this is I'm yours. You should you be doing? reading this. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> it's out. I Although it. I have yet to try it, I like to imagine... What? Say it out loud. Uh, Say it. Although I have yet to try it, I like to imagine that Italian semen would add an exciting twist. All right, Fred, ready? <sighs> That's what she said. Thank you. That's what they all like say. The, That's but, what they all say to there. me, Fred. That's what they all say to me, Fred. And you know what? It does. He's right. Paul, trust your instincts on this one, buddy. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry. Good. Oh, no. I forgot about this. The semen bomb. Look at that image. Now, I know that you all, like, everyone who's listening that doesn't have this up on their screen right now, <laughs> you can't see it. Fuck, I just scrolled through But the there device. is a big old bubble, <laughs> like a big old cum bubble oh, on the top that covers well over half of the surface area. It's like if you were to stick a pin in that bubble, it would be like a scene from Ghostbusters. Dropping shot glasses of spirits into beer has been popular for a long time. This recipe uses a shot of semen to reach a new level of visual and gustatory sensation. Ooh, SAT word, huh? You just 
It's literally just you put a shot of semen into a glass of beer. The recipe That's is, it. yeah, fuck, bust the nut into a shot glass and then simply drop that shot glass into a, yeah, a pint of beer. You're not yeah. exaggerating. That no, is literally it. what it says. That's Ejaculate it. into a shot glass yeah. and simply drop it into a tall glass of cold beer, twisting as you drop it. Watch as the <laughs> semen mixes with the beer and Fuck. drink it once the shot glass has released oh, most of its load. <laughs> Semenology does not get better or easier than this. Oh, Paul, you're a fucking lunatic, dude. Look at the frothy suds. Look at the look at the third picture. Oh, oh God! It's like fr oh no. You guys, it's best you don't see this. Yeah, you know what? You're th th this is this is better off that this is being done on a podcast and like not a visual format. Yes. Okay. Oh. But that's why we're doing it in a podcast, right? It's like because this would not fly on stream. No way. All right, let me get that's the one, one of the reasons. Yeah. All right. Galliano Camshat. Galliano is an Italiano herbe liqueur with a distinct yellow color. Despite its unique exotic flavor, it does not overpower the semen at all. In fact, the mellow, spicy vanilla tones enhance the seminal notes. Mix the two creams before a bit them stiff. Pour the Galliano in a shot glass and <sighs> use a spoon to carefully layer the hot coffee on top. Add the semen cream and drink while still hot. Beating them stiff was a conscious choice. You bet it was. <laughs> a shot of Foti. This is the ultimate semen shot. A drink with the pure taste of zesty semen and vodka. <laughs> it's just half an ounce of vodka and an ounce of semen and a lemon peel. So That's where it. is the drink in this book where he just tells you to fucking fill a rocks glass with cum and sip it? <laughs> you know? Like how people drink whiskey, right? Like neat. Like just come, come neat. Like where's that drink? <laughs> <laughs> there, There's something that I've talked to you about wanting to do on stream with you. Mm. Um, I, I was telling you about uh, the Eye of Argon. Yes, yes. I'm definitely going to read that during a, uh, a stream. I, I, like I, I, want, yeah. I, I want to join you for that really badly. If, 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 if you don't want to, that's okay. Of course. But all right. All right Mikasa, like, Sukasa. It is immaculate. And one of the things that makes it amazing is the use of completely unnecessary um, metaphors for everything, right? Like, whenever he refers to eyes, they are orbs. Um, and he uses the wrong, like, adjectives to describe things. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm picking up on here. This recipe calls for larger amounts of prostate milk, more than can <laughs> be harvested... Why? More than can be harvested from a producer in a single evening. <laughs> and the, again, you know, the the, oh, the veneer of, oh, this being a non-sexual thing is falling away immediately. Harvested in a single evening. Now, you have one or two options. You can collect the semen over the course of many days, or you can just have a big fuck-off gay orgy. That, that he's saying you have to prepare. You have to like, semen to harvest it up to three days in advance can be stored in the fridge, but for longer storage, it must be stored in the freezer. I find it convenient to ejaculate directly into a container that I keep in the freezer. Je I was joking about this earlier. He does have a cum tupper, a, a cumperware. <laughs> he does. He's got oh, oh, a no. whole Tupperware set that's just for cum. Uh, I like how he... Oh. I find it convenient. Yeah, do you? Do you find it convenient? <sighs> My dear friend Ricard says that this drink pairs fabulously with crayfish. I, how much would I bet R Ricard was just, like, yanking his chain? It's like, yeah, yeah, Paul. Yeah, I drank your cum cocktail. I had it with... <laughs> yeah, I had it with some seafood. Paired really nicely, Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, can I get off the phone now, Paul? <laughs> Can I go back to life that doesn't involve cooking with semen, please? Tequila cum shot. Tequila shots are classic frat party drink. That that's a typo, by the way. He forgot the he forgot a. Yes, it is. This recipe adds the exciting semen dimension. I'm pretty sure that Rick and Morty went there. They got transported to the cum dimension. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man. <sighs> Oh, it's just nothing and, and, and the, the pictures. 
that like he describes what he's doing in the pictures but why don't you go ahead and tell us exactly how he puts this the trick to successful tequila cum shots is to thicken the fresh semen so that it stays on your hand place a dab of sticky sauce between your thumb and index <laughs> finger <laughs> like this is exactly what you described he's coming up with like alternate like euphemisms i guess for come because what is he, is he tired of just saying the word come yeah he's trying to stay clever <sighs> sticky sauce <laughs> i can't dude <laughs> with the lemon wedge between your fingers grab the tequila glass with the other hand lick the salty cum off your head drink the <sighs> shot and finish by biting into the lemon. You know what? This, this, he's saying that this is something, you know, that, that tequila shots are common at frat parties. This sounds like a good frat initiation, doesn't it? You know how frat right. uh, frats always make uh, the new uh, inductees do fucking crazy, dumb, disgusting shit to get into the frat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fucking, this is perfect for them. Mm -hmm. You have to drink the nut of every fucking senior frat member. <laughs> to thicken the semen, oh. I use xanthan gum, though powdered gelatin could also be used. Sprinkle a tiny pinch of gum into the semen and whisk with a fork. Be careful not to add too much, as this will turn it into an unappetizing clump. Because this wasn't unappetizing before, right? Again, we're talking- he's trying to put it in the context of, This is tasty, guys. This isn't fetish fuel. Fred, the pictures. I know. I know. He's just smeared cum on his hand. That's what that that's what the picture is. Oh, dude. It's like glistening. Oh my fucking god. Why is it that color? What the fuck is going on here? I'm going to the next drink. I can't look at that anymore. Oh, no, that's, that's it. it. We're done. Oh, that was the last drink. We're almost done. Yeah, like I said, we're Ooh, almost done, but okay. we have the frequently asked questions. Mm -hmm. This is almost comical. Yeah. Um What do you mean almost? <laughs> 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 so our first question is what is the nutritional value of semen semen contains a good balance of fructose sugars proteins enzymes vitamins and minerals on its own semen meets the criteria for a low carb food and he's made a <laughs> fake nutrition facts label yeah, he did. for it look at it holy for shit semen. yeah it's like the nutrition facts label it's got like the fat it's got total fat, zero, saturated fat, zero, trans fat, zero, cholesterol, zero, sodium, zero. But uh, but that's bullshit, right? Semen is, this is salt. It's salty. I, I don't know the real science of that, but instinctually, yeah, I want I, I want to say you're right. Uh, it's got uh, 150 milligrams of protein. Uh, I don't know how much cum he's... Uh, oh, okay, okay, one tablespoon, right? A teaspoon. Yeah. One teaspoon, that, that is, right? Five milliliters? Mm. One teaspoon of cum. Uh, calories from fat, zero. Um, it's got 300 carbohydrates, uh, uh, 300 milligrams, 300 milligrams of sugar. Um, it says 300 milligrams meet the criteria as, as low carb. Cause like, you know, if you're on the Atkins diet, you could get away with cum chugging. Like, is that? Yeah, probably. Probably gotta do it in moderation, I think. Well, right? well remember, this is a teaspoon. This is only a teaspoon. Um, which, I mean, is it, is a teaspoon like the average size nut, you think? Uh, no, I... I, I think that's kind of small for more, a nut. More than that, right? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Av the average you, you person, would, the average and, load. Uh, here, uh, it, how, how about a, a it, it is a heaping teaspoon. That is, <laughs> like, un, uh, unless, like, you know, you're you're edging the person. And, like, really. Like, <laughs> you can get, it, it is teaspoon. absolutely possible. And, like, free, you will frequently get way more than that, right? But... <laughs> If, if you're talking about your average, like, oh, I, I'm going to nut before I go to sleep. It's like, yeah, probably. That's probably about right. <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> I'm at this point in my career. How about you, bud? You chose this. I did. This for you. You suggested this book. What are the health and safety considerations when consuming <laughs> semen? Sadly, don't think about it. Don't think about your life. You it, just, just go full DSP and don't think about it. It's, it's better not to linger on it too long. Sadly, the scientific community has not yet studied this issue enough to give us a conclusive answer. 
My principle is that a healthy producer equals healthy semen. I would only consume semen from a producer whom I would be willing to have sexual relations with. And there, it's gone. Like, any pretense of this is gone. But at this point, who is he probably, like, not willing to have sexual relations with? Like, you might be able to argue that, like, oh, you know, he is serious about this. No. With this, it's gone. Any, like, who is he kidding at this point? You think the alcohol will, like, kill STDs in the semen? I don't know. You think it's possible to, like, you know, throw back one of these cocktails and, like, get herpes? Does it work like that? I don't think so. Well, that's a virus, right? Like, I don't think alcohol kills viruses. It's just, like, bacteria and No, it, kill, it kills and... viruses. Does it? I don't know. Yeah, it, it kills, like, fucking everything. I, I want to, like, see, see, my gut reaction is, no, it's not going to kill that. But at the same time, you know, you can use vodka to sanitize wounds. You know, you can use grain alcohol to in a, in a pinch. sanitize yeah. wounds. Yeah, in a pinch, if you really need to. So I'm like, I don't know. Um, can you read the next question for me, please? Can I secretly add semen to surprise my friends? No, never. Especially don't use the gym and tonic, which is so <laughs> good at covering up the taste of semen that it can make a smoker's cum taste good. Definitely don't use that one. Not that one in particular. If you were going to do it, that would be the one to do it and that's uh, to do it with, and that's why you should not use it. Definitely not the gym into. Oh. As with my recipes in Natural Harvest, a collection of semen-based recipes, these cocktails are only meant for consenting adults. Well, at least he's got a code of ethics, right? Mm -hmm. um, which I just ha we have evidence to doubt significantly. I think, based on what we've read here tonight. Um, but I do have to admit something to you, Fred. Remember when we were hanging out at the hotel lobby at that convention, and I yeah. bought you a, I bought you a beer. Oh no. Mike, I, d I never thought you would be so thoughtful. That's what friends are for, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I have you swimming around inside me. Can, <laughs> can semen... <laughs> can semen... Can semen be considered vegetarian? I would consider semen to be vegetarian, but not vegan. Thank God we got that out of the way. Yeah, so, yeah, um, vegans out there, no go. But, yeah, if you're vegetarian, you're safe. You're ready to rock and roll on this. Integrity preserved. In, 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 in that respect, any other integrity you have is completely gone. <laughs> and not coming back. The next one actually might be... All right, so, so we, we have definitely established that this man, whatever he might be, is an expert in the flavor of semen. Yes. We can agree on that, correct? Yes. Yes. This next cue might be useful. Yes. How can I enhance the flavor of my semen? I have found, and if, if you want a good answer, there is no better man to ask. I have found <laughs> really not. That, that ginger positively affects the flavor, and in general, a diet rich in fresh fruits also works well. I prefer naturally healthy semen, and I'm skeptical to the various dietary supplements sold to enhance semen flavor. That exists? I had no idea. It makes sense, right? I mean, people, you know, you don't want your cum to taste bad if, you know, you have people like, you know, chugging it on the reg, especially. So yeah, sure. it stands to reason that there would be an industry about that, ar around that, right? Yeah, pe people are, like, self-conscious of the taste of their... Oh, God, I wanna, what's one of the euphemisms that he used? Your sticky white sauce. Mil your sticky sauce. Yeah, your sticky Fuck. sauce. To quote the, uh, the prophet here. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, 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 again, like you, like you said, there's no greater authority. Like, you, you ain't gonna find one. Yeah. For, uh, no, like, anything else you want to say about him, uh, he's got that. Yeah, it's like, this is his little hill. This is his little pile of semen that he, <laughs> that he is the king of. And I will give that to him. He can have it. A distinct honor to be sure. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I always heard the thing about pineapple making your semen, like, taste better, right? I've heard about that, pineapple. but apparently ginger. So, I mean, there you go. Uh, from, the, uh, from the source, uh, straight from the uh, cum-gummed gums of the source here. From Paul the well. Paul Seaman Demon, straight from the Jizzwell. <laughs> he, yeah, he is a he is a veritable Jizzwell of knowledge. Can human semen be substituted with animal semen? 
Uh, hey, Kiro the Wolf, if you're listening, I got something for you. Uh, who's that? Oh, he he's a zoophile furry. The furries have been um, getting rid of all of the gross people, but they've been really public about it, and so, like, a bunch of zoophile furries are getting kicked out of the fandom. Uh, I morally object to... Yeah, it's sexual things with animals. Uh, I, I feel like that's not know, a controversial statement, in a, is in it? A, in a significant way, and I feel pretty safe in making that statement. <laughs> like, I don't feel yeah. like anybody's I, gonna try to cancel me because yeah, I said yeah. I think it's wrong to fucking, like, have sex with animals or manually masturbate animals so you could put their cum in a cocktail! Okay? Yeah, and I, I, I don't think that that's a fucking outrageous statement. No. Sorry. Um, It's you, not... I'm there with you. He says, you can buy straws of animal semen, but it is very expensive, Douglas. Besides... It, it's because <laughs> it's because it's used for animal breeding. Right. Um, besides, I think that using bought semen reduces semen to just another ingredient. And there it is, Fred. There's the rub. Yeah. There it is. There's him thinking that semen is something holy. Something that is worth being respected and admired and cherished above any other old ingredient that you could throw into a recipe. Let's go back to the intro. Mm -hmm. You remember? We eat milk and eggs, so why all the fuss about semen's inappropriateness as food? Well, here's your answer. Right. It is set apart somehow, even in his mind. Yes, he's contradicted himself pretty clearly here. Yes. The two things that actually piss me off about this book are his obvious, like, he's obviously suggesting, put cum in your friend's drink. Like, he, he's <laughs> saying, he's saying, you know, don't do it. I mean, don't, but... but don't, don't, yeah, he's saying don't do it. <laughs> don't, but it feels like, but his rhetoric is on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's like, fuck, fucking come your friend's drink, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's getting, I mean, it's gonna make me hard when you do it. Serve cum at a Halloween party. What should I consider when experimenting with semen drinks? Semen is easier to successfully mix with liquids when it has melted. Freshly harvested semen is thick and lumpy, but quickly <laughs> melts to a more fluid state. Also, mixing semen with acidic liquid sometimes makes it curdle. <laughs> oh. Fuck. No. Oh. I made that joke earlier about it curdling. You remember? Y yeah. That was a joke. That was yeah, a joke. But apparently it can, it can curdle. And does curdle. The more you know. I mean, granted, I never wanted to know that. Yet, here we are. And here you are, dear listener. So, uh, check it out. The special thanks. Uh, he wants to thank D. Simon of the Sick and Wrong Podcast for suggesting the title Semenology. You can't imagine why this book would end up on a podcast titled The Sick and Wrong Podcast. Uh, Stephen Fry for tweeting about my book last year. It r really helped. Um, Daniel Tosh. From Tosh 2.0. Tosh 0.0. For featuring yeah. my book on your show. People are still mentioning it. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, Richard Gagner. Again, without you, this book would not exist. I am forever indebted to you. It's got to be his lover. I, I, um, I wonder if he's friends with Father Donutty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris for being an inspiring role model who I have no doubt wants absolutely nothing to do with this book and would do anything and everything to distance himself <laughs> from it. Uh, and Lance Jackson for creating the cover of this book. So there you have it, cover to cover, semenology. Granted, we did not read the actual recipes, um, but you know, you're welcome, actually. Yeah, this, this is... <laughs> that, I was gonna say. Th this is <laughs> Could you imagine if someone walked up to you and said, Mike, thank you so much for being an inspiration to me. I have never reached such such heights of cum guzzling <laughs> but with your inspiration i yeah. feel that i may be able to master <laughs> semenology oh uh, i feel like somebody so has said you. that has said that to me honestly uh, <laughs> at one point like that's a, having a little deja vu here actually <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> but you know what man yeah i be, i feel like this is not an honor that Neil Patrick Harris, I, I would imagine, wants. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd be mean, Fred. Like, what if somebody said that to you? Would you? Would you? I, I mean, I, I guess, like, I like inspiring people. I'd find it flattering, um, but I would have to ask them where was the where was the part of my career 
where like I chugged so much cum that they were like, wow, I want to be like that guy. <laughs> like, I mean, most of the cum chugging that I've done has not been in the public eye. So, you know, I'd imagine, like, how did they know? Like, how did they find out? Like, maybe I'm maybe I'm just, like, that obvious, that aggressive, uh, blatant of a cum chugger that, like, they just fucking, it's just, it just bleeds, oozes out of my every pore. It oozes out of your meatus. <laughs> so, final thoughts? I truly believe that this is fetish material, that he wrote this as a, as something to further his fetish, and that people not realizing it is part of the fetish. Yeah. So we just killed his boner. Uh, by realizing it. By becoming yes. aware, we could... Uh, all right, well... Yes. Sorry, Paul. Maybe you can... Maybe you could still, like, you know, blast one out at half chub. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Um, there's a thing that I, I remember talking about during a, a stream on Twitch... Uh, when I was when when somebody first showed this to me and I fucking talked uh -huh. about it nonstop for like two weeks and everybody was like please shut up about this book Michael, um, <laughs> I I couldn't help but keep thinking about for some reason th this guy's parents and like imagining them like going through life like just just kind of having to to answer to the fact that like their son does this like for a living. Like, imagining them at a fancy dinner party or whatever, and, mm -hmm. you know, there's another guy sitting there, and he's like, My son made the, the Forbes 30 under 30. My daughter is a marine biologist who discovered a new kind of snail or algae. Yeah, that's and cool. then they And then they turn to, the, you know, Paul's parents. My, my son is a published author. <laughs> oh, what does he write about? Oh, it's uh, it's culinary um re recipes. He's a, a renowned chef, you know, as <laughs> as you may have heard. Um, you know, like how do they do this? Like, how does that conversation go? Do they? Do, do, has he been? Disowned? Well, actually, now it just got dark because it occurred to me that, like, you know, obviously Paul is, is at least, you know, like, bisexual. So maybe, like, his parents disowned him on account of, like, his sexuality. But, I mean, what, it, you know, let, like, let's assume that that didn't happen. Let's assume that that's not the case. Let's assume that that wasn't any, something that they had a problem with at all. And now it's just, wait, what are you doing, Paul? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what happened? Yeah, they decide to reconnect after years of silence. They're like, maybe we like, want like, son, we we feel that we did you wrong. We want to reconcile. And it's like, oh, mom, oh, dad, I'm so glad to see you again. So, what have you been up to all of these years, son? Well, I've been drinking cum. <laughs> I I was uh, fucking retweeted by Stephen Fry. <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal, Dad. <laughs> Even if, like, they do have a good relationship with him, how do they talk about that with other people? Like, how does that, like, how does that impact their life? Like, I don't know why my mind kept going here, but it did. No, this, you realize this acts as a filter. So now, like, because he always brings it up and this is all he fucking talks about, his only friends are the ones with which he drinks cum. That's his life now. He has crafted that. Like I, I am willing to bet that his only real friends now are the ones with whom he drinks come. And you know what they say: the friends who drink come together, stick together. Oh, stop! And that's episode one of the Warrens. We are over an hour. This is like even edited down. This is going to be well over an hour, but it was worth it. I feel it was worth it. We tried our best to keep it to a half hour, but uh, the, I don't know. This topic was. Maybe maybe reading every recipe was a bit much. I think that might have been a bit much. Uh, but that's okay. I don't know. There were some good gems in there. It's it was a good <sighs> time. And uh, thanks for uh, doing this with me, bud. This is a lot of fun. Really oh, excited fuck. About I mean, it. like this is literally just us hanging out again, like again, just recording like it. usual. <laughs> just yeah. recording it. We're, we're just recording it now. It's like if you want to, if you want to have an idea about what our relationship is like, it's 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 literally this without it being recorded, pretty much.
Like, li- li- literally, well, li- like, we-, we are trying to keep it a little bit more podcast friendly in terms of, like, trying to stay on topic, right? Because our conversations will meander. But this, as we said earlier, the conception of this podcast was we're just talking about shit and we're like, maybe it'd be fun to record it because we talk about weird shit a lot. Weird shit is like my bread and butter. Weird shit mm-hmm. is it yeah. his bread and butter. We just love yeah. weird shit. So uh, we thought, and we're glad we're glad that we can share it with everyone, even though you might not be, after this particular episode. But uh, do you want to yeah. say uh, to talk about some of the other topics that we might have coming up for future, or you um, want that to be a surprise? I know you like your topics the, to be a surprise for your the, the, well, videos. Well, we've been talking. I've been trying to talk you into covering Mobility Mary. Yes, Mobility Mary. Um, I I think. Uh, if we do that for episode two, we, we whatever we do, whenever we do it, we got to sit down and watch a bunch of her videos. We will. It and an uh, irritable cause... woman with a mobility scooter. Also, yes. uh, Rumpology, the future, uh, the, bleh, the practice of telling the future, predicting the future by inspecting somebody's ass. Yes. Um, very interesting stuff. There's plenty of stuff is my point. And if I don't make it down the rabbit hole in it or it doesn't fit in an episode, it could very well end up on one of these episodes. If you like the podcast, let us know. If you felt we were too long-winded and annoying, also please let us know. We're feeling this out because we've never, like, you've done podcasts before, but it was very much more in the rambly style. And we're trying to, like, stay a little bit more focused, kind of. Uh, I did one podcast in the past, and and it's, and it's uh, they're, they're like... An hour and 45 minutes long, like on average, they, they, it's, it's just, they're too long. So we were attempting to do something shorter with this. Uh, we were, our target was like 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, obviously, we overshot that tonight, but in the future, we're going to try to trim up. We're learning. It's learning. Yeah, th- learning this experience. is this is very much an experimental thing. Yeah. Um, and the more we do it, like the more hopefully like we'll get better at it. Th- this is completely uncharted territory for me. Um, and it's honestly like I didn't learn anything like I, I tend to not to learn things uh, So, you know, like I really would say that I have more experience than you but ultimately I don't I don't think I do It's just <laughs> I fucking me and my friends just sat down and basically just talked while we watched commercials and then put the and recorded it That was it. I don't, I don't know if I know how, how to make a podcast one-on-one. I have no idea, but I suspect that some topics will lend themselves more to shorter episodes, but this one I felt like there was so much going on under the surface that it was difficult to resist examining it. Hey, you know what? Pilot episodes are usually longer anyway, right? Yeah. We also were sort of discussing um, potentially planning out our episodes a little bit more, having more, like, our our initial idea was to have, like a, like, a list of things that we wanted to talk about and we sort of sacked that at the last minute to go ahead and just try to do a little more free form um but next episode i imagine like mobility mary will be watching we'll have timestamps, and we'll um try to structure it with these other topics yeah we're, we're gonna try it we just figured we'd throw this out here see how people like it experiment a little bit the first few episodes will be experimental but that's okay we'll figure it out but please don't be afraid to let us know what you think. We are open to criticism. Um, yes, we need criticism. We need people to say what's working, what's not working, what's annoying. Please. Like, we, we, want, we want this to be fun, right? Like, we want it to be fun not just for us, but for everyone listening as well. So any sort of criticism. It's just going to be a bunch of comments that are like, Fred, lose the annoying Italian. <laughs> lose I don't the think annoying so. loud Guido. Lose that guy. <laughs> and then you got, you got yourself a podcast, bud. You know how, like, sometimes, like, podcasts and, I guess, like, the streamers will do this sometimes, or, like, Instagram influencers will have, like, a name for their for their followers? Isn't that mm-hmm. fucking annoying? Don't you hate that? Yeah. Y'all um, are just fuckers. Do you want to... But I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, like, we could, we could just embrace it, and I thought of one. Like, if we could call them the bunnies. There are bunnies, right? Because me and you were, like... The papa and the other papa, they like they get is, like the gay dad rabbits, and they could be like the bunnies. But but we're this is this is the Warrens, not the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> okay, good point, good point. <laughs> I just saw like a fucking like like an old grizzled rabbit in like a Hugh Hefner bathrobe, and it was like really funny. I just want uh-huh. to put that mental image into everybody's head. It's, He's got really droopy <laughs> ears and a fucking like a you know one of those uh, those corn cob pipes or whatever. Cool oh, I don't know what the fuck it's called. The pipe! The tobacco pipe! I bet you his semen didn't taste too great, huh? 
Oof. Oh. All right, let's wrap it up. Stop. That, yeah, that's a great note to end this on. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening and for enduring this. We'll see you all soon. Sometime. There will be more. Bye. Bye. Bye.